What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and in today's episode of the Fighting Game Tutorial Series, we're going to be going over reversals, counters, parries, however you want to think of this, they will all work. They're called different things in different games. Essentially, when we come in here, we will be able to enter some sort of stance by pressing some inputs. Mine's actually just pressing the light attack while I block, and I will enter this stance. If no action is taken, no hits are landed during that stance, the character will return to the idol once they are finished with the animation. If I am to do this again, and a hit is registered at that point, they will counterattack. No damage will occur to the player that originally had the hit landed on them, but instead a counterattack will be launched that will damage the other opponent if they're within range. This will also work with projectiles, so we can do it like this. Of course, the damage is negated for the player that was in the parrying stance. However, the player that attacked that character was not in range of the hitbox, so they did not take damage. But it is still a counter, it still stops them from taking damage. Now a lot of games do this a lot of different ways, so you may have it to where this uses meter. You have a lot of different options here, and I'm trying to keep it open. So that's what mine looks like for this first episode, but we can explore more reversals in the future of this series. Now before we hop into the content of this episode, if you want to get caught up in the series, I'll link you to the entire playlist right here. And alternatively, if you don't care about that, you can go ahead and check out this episode right here, which is where we go over blocking, which is going to be required for today's episode for my implementation, but it might not be required for your implementation. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. This is a code and blueprint tutorial series. Most of our behavior is going to be in the code today, and then some in the animation blueprint. So let's start in the code. Specifically, we'll go to our fighter template character .h, and we want to scroll down to our attack state enum. The attack state is what our character is currently doing in terms of attacks. Could be in their startup, active recovery, or they could be in some grab states. I'm adding a new one here called counter stance. So the counter stance is that initial section where the character is doing that little thing with their hands. <laughs> That's them getting ready for the counter. You can make this whatever you want. But after grab break, I have E underscore counter stance. And I've given it a U meta display name of counter underscore stance. That way we can find it in the blueprint with that name. Now, let's go to the fighter template character.cpp and go down to the take damage function. So here's my take damage, and I have put everything that was previously in this function within this if statement. And what we're checking for is if the attack state is not equal to e attack state colon colon e underscore counter stance. Basically, if the attack state of this character is counter stance don't take damage now at the end of this if statement we can follow it down you'll see everything that was previously in take damage is still here just inside this if statement we can follow it down to an else statement that we want to add to it as well else we want to set the attack state to e attack state colon colon e underscore attack active and this is because we want to trigger the character's attack from this. We actually should do E underscore attack startup or started. So I'm going to do that one instead of active. Either one will really work, but I think attack started makes more sense since we are spawning hitboxes and going through the whole motion of an attack. In the animation blueprint, if we were in the counter stance and we go to one of the attack states like started, active, or recovery, then we'll actually trigger the reversal attack. And we can add a comment here if we want. The character has received an attack while in the counter stance state, forcing them to enter an attack. I played around with it, and attack started does technically work, but it will only work if you don't have a start transition event that sets the attack state in the animation blueprint when going to your commands. That is possible and not really an issue, but it really is just easier to have attack active, even if it makes slightly less sense. It will be overridden and go to attack startup when we go to the reversal attack anyway, so I wouldn't worry about it for now. I'm gonna keep it as attack active, but do what you feel is right. Now let's load up the editor again with that change in there. Inside the editor, the first thing we want to do is set up an actual command to trigger our reversal stance. So I'm going to go to my character blueprint where my mutant VP is, or if you've implemented the data table implementation like I have, I'm going to do it in there. So if you've done the character blueprint one, you could go to your character commands here, 
before if you don't need data table one you can go to it here either way we want to add a new command and I've called this one blocking reversal it has one input type of light attack and we have to be in the blocking state to enter it the charge frames it's not currently held no result tank state required meter one frame between inputs since it's a one input command doesn't matter can't be held for any frames can't cancel can't auto combo I did put in a description a reversal stance entered from a blocking state zero startup active and recovery frames that's not really true we do have the automatic frame data that we can implement but if you do want to use the static or manual method you could put them in here your video path for your command list and the character class it belongs to which again doesn't matter in my case but we might as well set it to mutant while we're in here and once i have my new command i know that i can trigger it and so of course we need an animation to go with it so let's go into our animation blueprint for our mutant and when we come in here we have a huge mess in the state machine but we're going to want to go in there and make a new state this state is going to be called reversal stance. Now, if you're not doing it from the block, you can go from idle to this reversal stance state, just like we've done all of our other commands. However, in my case, since this is actually coming from a manual block, I am adding the state and being able to transition from manual block to the reversal stance, but that's really just up to you how you want your logic to behave. So anyway, right click, add state. I've called it reversal stance and in this state, we have an animation that is not set to loop that I've called Mutant Reversal Stance. And it's going to look like this. So basically the mutant is getting ready to capture any attack that comes their way. Now, at this point, we can transition from the manual block to the Reversal Stance state using this rule. So this is just like all of our other commands. We're going to grab our character reference, get the character commands array. Then we want to get the proper index. So in my case, it is index 26. This is just what index it's going to be in the array. Using the data table method, the array is filled out in the same order. So whatever index you have in the data table, you can use in this box. Then we drag off of it and break the command to get all the details about it. Except the only one that I actually need is if the command was used or not. And if it was, we can enter the transition, which means we can go from the block to the reversal stance. Like all of our other commands, we want to have a start attack transition on the start transition event because we still want to set the same variables such as can move to false and all these other things when we do any command. And this is no different. However, once we fully transition to the reversal stance, I actually want to trigger another event that I've called enter reversal stance. So add a name here and then go to your event graph and search for that name. Enter reversal stance, it's the event and I'm notify. In here, what I'm doing is grabbing the character reference and then setting the attack state to be counter state because once we are fully transitioned to this animation, we can say that we're in the counter stance state. Before that point, we probably don't want to be able to perform any counters, so I'm not going to set it as soon as we start transitioning. Quite literally, character reference, set attack state, and you can set it to counter stance. At this point, I also want to reset my character state. We were in the blocking state before, but there's no reason to remain in this when we go into the reversal but this is an attack state we're setting, not the character state, so you technically would be in the counter state and blocking. So instead, I'm just resetting the character state to no action. That way, we don't have any issues that come up later from that. So now when we receive a hit, we will go to take damage. So as I scroll down here, you see attack state equals attack state active. And that's exactly what we're going to need to transition from reversal stance to reversal attack. So I've added a new state called reversal attack. And if we go in here, I have an animation not set to loop called mutant reversal attack. And it looks like this. It has him swinging his arm. He's got a started to spawn the proximity hitbox and active to spawn the strike hitbox and an ended to delete the hitboxes and enter recovery. And we wanna be able to transition from the stance to this attack. Now in here, what I'm doing is checking for the attack active attack state. That's what we set in the else statement. And this will allow the character to go from the stance to the attack. 
And here, in this transition rule, I call the start attack transition again. This is important because even though we triggered it when we went to the reversal stance, if the character is not attacked, they will go back to idle. So when we know that we're going to go to the reversal attack state, we have to call this event again. Start transition event is start attack transition again, just like it was from manual block to reversal stance. To return to idle from the reversal stance, what we have to do is just let the animation run out. There's no transition rule, it's automatic. So reversal stance to idle is simply automatic rule based on sequence player and state. Once the animation for the reversal stance runs out, the character will go to the idle state. I have a start transition event of end attack transition in here, just like we have for our regular commands when returning to idle. Remember, this is just a command. So we have to treat it the same way we have throughout the rest of the series. Now, reversal attack is the same deal. It can also return back to idle. So once the attack is finished, we want to go back to idle. This transition rule is also automatic. Once the animation is done, we return back to idle, simply enough. This also needs the start transition event of end attack transition, because again, it's a command. We need to reset everything when the attack is done, clean up the hitboxes, all that good stuff. And that is what our animation blueprint will look like. Now there is one other scenario I want to cover with these attacks. So if the character enters that state and they can't take damage from melee or projectiles, how can you counter it? One method I've set up in my game that you can set up in yours is throws can counter them. So if we come in here and use the attack and say the other character goes to throw them. Whoops, I pressed the wrong input. Let's say the other character goes to throw them. They should be able to be thrown and countered like usual. So this works because the throw hitbox does not actually cause damage until the character has been thrown. So take damage isn't called. And at this point, we can say the reversal stance can go to the throw state in the anim BP, which will allow them to take damage and do all the normal throw stuff. Let's go back to the anim BP and go back to the reversal stance state. In here, I have a transition rule to the grappled and thrown state, which is how we handle our throws in the game. So from idle to grapple thrown, I had a boolean has landed throw, and that's still accurate. I actually just turned this transition rule into a shared transition rule. To do that, you can go to any unshared rule, hit promote to shared, and then it will ask you to name it. In this case, I took my idle to grapple thrown, and I set it to get thrown as a shared rule. I also updated my idle to grappled here to use the same rule. Not required, but it makes it a little bit cleaner. And for today's episode, I've added reversal stance to grappled thrown, and I've used the shared transition rule of get thrown. So it looks like this. You can set it up without the shared rule, but the shared rule just makes it easier. No events on the shared rule, so you don't have to worry about that. However, if you were to do that, then when the character was thrown, they would immediately enter a different state when they landed. So if they're thrown instead, we still want to reset that value. And we can do that where we have our throw anim notifies. So actually, let's go into the grappled thrown animation. We have this apply throw force. At this point, this is definitely going to be called when the character is getting thrown. So at apply throw force, we can reset the character's attack state back to default. So let's go to our apply throw force event. And here is our behavior. This has all been covered from previous episodes. But at the end of this logic, I've added a new node today, which is to reset the attack state back to none. So character reference set attack state none. If they were still going to be in the counter stance, now they're reset to none. So there's no issues that can come up from being thrown from the reversal stance instead of going to the reversal attack or to idle. At this point, we now have reversals on our game, at least a very basic system for them. So if you want to see anything else specific to them, let me know. I'll be happy to cover them in a different episode. Otherwise, guys, that's all I got. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please subscribe and feel free to check out the Patreon to support me like so many kind members of the community have. I really appreciate and love you guys. Thank you so, so much. If you had any issues with this video or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. I would be happy to help you out and get you sorted so you can keep on working on your game. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.